Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Inside Rangers. Today, we're at Loftus Road for the London Derby between the under 21s of Queen's Park Rangers and Millwall. And in today's show, we'll see the latest crop of young stars emerging from the academy structure at QPR and speak to head coach Paul Hall. What are his ambitions for these players at this stage in their development? And how close are they to catching the eye of the first team boss, Mick Beale? There's a real sense of positivity around here right now, with Illish Chair, who shone at this level, central to the success of the first team. Will some of these players follow in his footsteps today? Later in the show, we see the visit of another QPR team to Loftus Road. Last month, QPR women played Norwich in front of an impressive crowd, reflecting the continued growth of women's football at the club after England's success at the Euros. Chloe Kelly famously started her career at QPR and went on to score the winning goal for England this summer. Will another Rangers player follow in her footsteps? But before all that, reporter Joe Douglas speaks to Under-21's boss, Paul Hall, to get his thoughts ahead of today's game. What are you expecting from, uh, from today's game? Well, uh, like we say, it's a development game, so we, we want the players to show confidence um, and show a good examples of what we've been asking them to do in training. So hopefully they, it's 1v1 domination, getting forward, breaking lines and making sure that the, we can uh, see, see the examples of what we've been asking them to do in, in the training sessions. You could win the game and it, and it had a multitude of sins. So we want a little bit of everything really, but uh, you can lose and be happy with the performance and you can win and not be happy. So it's important that the, the performance over everything is, is key. They've all got their individual targets to, to achieve and if those 11 come together, then they should be victorious in the game. However, we can still, we still have to hold them accountable for things that they've done, things that they haven't done, and things that they're trying to achieve and they're not at the end gate yet, but it's supposed to look pretty close to what the first team are doing. The local people are desperate for a local player to make it and um, you know, you've seen yourself with Bere Eze, Ilias Chair. Um, Ozzy KK, there's loads of players that we could name who have been with us in this particular game years ago and they've all gone in to make debuts into the first team and, and gone on to become really good championship players or have a, have a career outside of the club. But um, it's, that's how important it is, it's really important to people's lives and, um, and to the lives of the fans of QPR. Uh, so we just spoke to Paul. Um... It's, it's very clear that the message he's got here today. Yeah, he said it's all about developing. Uh, in fact, in his own words, he said it's everything about the club. If you, if you look at the club's uh, model before, it's all about bringing these players through. If you look at the likes of Cher and Eze, I think the fans want that. It's, it's great for the, for the club to bring forward. So I think, yeah, in terms of it's all about the development, I think that's very true. Yeah, definitely. And it's interesting because he also mentioned it's not all about like, the result today. No, definitely not. Not about the result. I think he's looking for more development of individual players. Um, you know, it's a great opportunity for these players to uh, to develop. I think in his own interview, he said, uh, you know, you can win a game one nil, and in terms of learning more, you can sometimes get more out of a out of a loss if, if players do the right thing. I think they're trying to mimic the first team's training, and and it's building a good pathway for them into the first team. Yeah, and talk about the first team. There's no first team players in the in the team today. It's all youngsters. Yeah, well, I think that's a great opportunity for the young players to step up. You know, I think it's great for them that they have an opportunity to, to make a name for themselves, to get, you know, Mick Beals looking at them in their terms of interest and, and what they can do. So if you look at the likes of Payda, he's been scoring goals in this, in this league. So I think it's a great opportunity for these players to, to make a name for themselves. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Joe. OK, as the under-21 players are getting ready for today's game, let's focus on a significant match that happened here at Loftus Road last month as QPR women's played Norwich with a high attendance and a good sign of what's coming in the women's game. Lewis Pierce reports. On the 18th of September 2022, QPR women took on Norwich City women at Loftus Road. After four consecutive away games to kickstart the campaign, resulting in five points, Steve Quashie's side were pleased to return to W12. The last time these sides faced off was on the final day of the 21-22 campaign at the Cayenne Prince Foundation Stadium, the first ever appearance in W12, resulting in a 2-1 victory for the R's. They were hoping for similar success today. 
Rangers were cheered on by a large crowd of 915, providing fantastic support for the team. Prior to kickoff, both team captains laid a wreath in the centre circle out of respect for Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II's passing. A minute's silence was held shortly afterward. Unbeaten Norwich started well, as a through ball was pounced on by Natasha Snelling, who attempted to chip Katie McLean, forcing the goalkeeper into a strong save. Vicky Greaves' long ball was taken down nicely from Brogan Moore, who set up Katie Akerman. Her low driving shot went under Norwich goalie Bryony Williams and out for a corner. After a scramble in the box, the ball fell nicely for captain Vicky Greaves, who shot on the turn hit the post. The deadlock was broken in the 19th minute. Freya Simmons flicked the ball on to Catherine Stanley, who cut in from the left and curled one from 25 yards out over McLean. The next closest effort for the R's came in the 35th minute as Laura Hennessy's free kick cannoned off the woodwork for the second time in the half. In the second half, the R's kept up the intensity. Hennessy's switch of play resulted in Katie Akerman getting a shot away from close range, which was denied by Williams. From the resulting corner, the ball sat up for more at the edge of the 18-yard box, whose shot was met with safe hands. Keeping up the pressure, substitute Ellen Wardlaw drove in from the right and some nice passing around the edge of the box saw Melanie Hall's curling shot saved by Flying Williams. Norwich couldn't handle the R's strong press and with some tricky footwork, Hall's effort went just over the crossbar. In the 85th minute, a great delivery was met by Megan Todd, who powered the header past McLean to seal all three points for the Canaries. As the final whistle sounded, the score finished QPR 0, Norwich City 2. After the match, we caught up with captain Vicky Grieve, who gave her thoughts on the game and the fantastic opportunity to play at Loftus Road again. Frustrating coming away 2-0 uh, with a 2-0 loss. I think that it went totally against the run of play for, for most of it. I think first goal, maybe we just didn't close down quick enough. Second goal was, uh, again, annoying because it's from a set piece. But I think we had some really, really good phase of play. Um, and yeah, we should have got more out of the game. So really frustrating, frustrating that's how I feel. Yeah, I mean, we, it doesn't matter what score it is, whether we're winning 10 0 or losing 10 0. I think that's, we have to persevere till the end because you don't really know what's going to happen. So I think we all believed that we were going to get a goal, and that's why we pushed so much as well. But, um, but yeah, I think the team together always, always pushed together for the team. Always, it's amazing, always amazing coming back here. Um, we obviously had the last game of the season here, and again, we had Norwich. Um, so, it, yeah, it's always good to come back here, and it just shows that the club support the women as well, and uh, love having, obviously, friends and family here as well. A big day in the history for QPR women, and I'm sure there's many milestones to come for the team, but let's change our focus today on the match taking place. QPR under-21s versus Millwall, with your commentary team, Tom Burridge and Connell Leinster. Thank you for that, Patrick. It's a glorious day for a game of football here at Loftus Road. Paul Hall's side are back in PDL2 action against second placed Millwall. Connell, the R's are in for a tough test this afternoon. Millwall have one of the best away records in the division. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this one, Tom. Bit of a London derby, so you should give, give, give the players some edge. A uh, lot of under-21s on show as well. No first teamers today. So yeah, should be a good match. Yeah, and we have your QPR side for this afternoon. In goal number one, Harry Halwax, number two, Arkel Joy. Jude Boyd, number three, Isaac Picblado, four, Trent Randall, five, Henry Hawkins, six, Alex Oraha, seven, Joseph Ajose, eight, Harry Murphy, 
9, Alfie Lloyd, 10, Rafferty Pedder, 11, Steve Baller. Your subs for this afternoon, Matteo Salomon, Caden Harrick, Micah Anthony, Haran Hamid, and Ivo Rossi. And we're away. It'll be Rendell to, uh, not Rendell, sorry, it'll be Smith to take the long throw in. Ball comes in, bit of a scuffle. Shot from the edge of the box from Lawson just goes over. You could say Mill will have had the better opportunities just, just towards the start of the game here, but it's not put it's not put the home side off wanting to play out the back still. Still looking to get the ball down and, and play to feet. It's Alfie Allen. Alfie Allen looks in a bit of trouble after that tackle. Uh, ball driven two. Shot comes in by Lawson. It just goes left of the goal. Ball comes in low and it's met by Adam Alak. It's just missed hit. And the ball will go in for... Oh, and it's oh, off the post save. and it's in, but it will be offside. What a save that is from Gilmore. That's a fantastic save by Jordan Gilmore there. The ball hit... After it seemed like a game of pinball there in the middle of the in the middle of the box, and Pedder just managed to get his shot away. Straight back on the attack. Stephen Ballard goes, plays it to Pedder, just comes to Ballard, goes for the shot, mm. and it's over the. Oh, Unlucky that. Will be a Millwall goal. Tell you kick. what, Tom, the R's are getting a lot of joy through Pedder and Ballard on this left hand side. Here's Penny, just playing it into the space there. Oraha on this far side here. We'll go for the shot and it's another good save by Jordan Gilmore. Will be another corner to the home side. Again, quite a few chances being created on the counter here from the home side, Connell. Yeah, a lot of width as well, I've noticed. Both, both wings, uh, the R's, causing real problems for Millwall. QPR quite efficiently keeping Millwall at bay here. And let's not forget, Millwall are the top goal scorers in this division. Yeah, back four doing a good job. I think Pedder's tracking back nicely on that left-hand side with Pip Bladder. Just got to be careful, though, watching that walker on the right-hand side because he's looking a real threat this half. But no goals conceded, and that's the main thing that matters. Hasn't gone back to Gilmore that much this half, has it, in terms of on the floor? No doubt it'll go long again. It doesn't. Goes into the middle of the park, and it's won by Lawson. He's looking to take the ball forward. Adam Malaki just driving invertedly, takes the shot on. Comfortable save that, wasn't it? Falls perfectly into the palms of Harry Harwax. You can tell whenever Baller and Pedder get the ball, all they want to do is just drive at that Millwall back four. Once again, he finds the pocket. Baller in the middle of the park, just looking to create some space for himself. Gets the ball out wide. Jude Boyd, ball in. Alfie Long, yeah, Alfie Lloyd just not able to get himself on the end of it. I think it would have been called for offside anyways. Had a, just not able to get on the end of that pass and Aurora's done well there to win the ball back and it comes out to Alfie Lloyd driving Pedder just on the edge of the box another good move from the Arzo there another fantastic move quick precise just lacking that finishing touch there Alfie by Lloyd taking the earlier Pedder. advice of Pitt Bladder there to get in behind keep going how do you think Paul Hall will be Assessing his uh, his team's performance this first half, Connor. Half, I think he'll be pleasantly pleased with that half. Some good football on display. Very good one touch on this left hand side in particular. Just think they got to cut out a few of those loose balls. Yeah, other than that, header on this right hand side, ball in, and it's well saved again by Gilmore, but it's turned in. Yeah, I think Gilmore just had one hand. Oh, he's given it. He's given goal the goal. Given. I'm very surprised by that, Tom. It was a good ball there from Pedder into this right-hand side. Worked the space all by himself. Good matched. save from Gilmore initially, wasn't it? Initially just... a very good save from Gilmore. Matched well, nice and low. Just looked like maybe he'd he'd done enough. Just lost control of it when it mattered, it looked like. Catch me all off guard early into this second half. Alfie Lloyd working the ball back to Baller. Baller on the edge of the box, just tries to get past one, get past Lovely get past feed two from Baller the there. Just dribbles out for a QPR corner. Yeah, early stages so far in the second half, but the home side looking to play the way they did in the first. Ball goes out for a goal kick from 
the free kick from Smith. Yeah, Captain Penny's a big lad there. To keep the the wing backs from Millwall more contained. Walker once again very high on that right hand side. The ball might come to him here. Getting a lot of joy in the early stages in that first half. And he looks to putting the ball in again. It'll go low, be driven back. Berteng with a shot. Just slips as he takes it. Good defending in the end from the Oz. Cleared away by George Boyd. Ah, look, lovely bit of play by the away side there. Boateng just getting it towards Walker. Ball comes in, but it's headed away yet again by Hawkins. Back out to Walker. Lawson, ball in. And it's a fantastic header yes, by Tom Leahy. Great ball in from Lawson I must there. say, you could argue the last five minutes might slightly be against the run of play there, but it was brilliantly worked. George Walker again creating... Creating a lot of problems for the uh, for the R's. Yeah, I've been saying it all game, haven't we? Walker's getting a lot of freedom on that right hand side, and the cross did come from there, this time by Lawson. Yeah, so fantastic ball in by Lawson. And it was well headed in, wasn't it? Tied swinging a little bit here, isn't it? Comes to Smith. Will it get away? It won't. Adam Malaki's on this left hand side, just looking for some options. It looks like he's going to have to go low. He does. It's Boateng with the shot. It's Great well block. blocked by Hawkins. Hawkins not afraid to put his body on the line for his team, is he? Yeah, Millwall just building pressure on the home side here. Adam Malaki's going for another long ball. Lee, he almost getting on the end of that one as well. And Boateng's in a lot of free space here. Getting off a lot of shots, it comes out. No foul given though by the referee. Potentially wide. Yeah, Abdul Malik there just creating another opportunity. And Millwall really trying to capitalise on on the pressure they're building here, Boateng's had a lot of opportunities in the last couple of minutes there. It's a slightly poor pullback, wasn't it there? I think from Walk on the right-hand side. Didn't quite put the ball in front of him where he wanted it, but a lot to digest in that. Just shouts of relax there from the R's, were not In the middle of the park, outside of his usual position at centre-back, will be Walker. Does well there, Walker. Just driving down the right-hand side. And I believe that's a penalty. It will be a penalty to Millwall. Looked very close to the edge of the box, didn't it there? Just pedder it was. Tracking back, trying to help out his fullback. Just a slight pull on the shirt there, I think, for uh, from pedder and it. Clip at the back of the heels, days. yeah. Clip at the back of the heels maybe as well, I think. Kind of tumbled on top of him. It looked very close. Obviously, we have no VAR here once again, so no way of really telling. Yeah, Walker did well to drive into the box and, and really when you're a referee, you have to give those, unfortunately. Howax looks looks tall, looks strong in the middle of the goal there. Abdumalek coolly slots it past Howax. <laughs> Lovely place finish there. The uh, the away side building up the pressure in the last five ten minutes ever since their their equaliser, and uh, it was a a well placed penalty from Abdumalek, sending uh, Howax the wrong way. Over the top for Leahy, who's undoubtedly made more of an impression in the second half. It's a fantastic turn there by Stephen Baller. Gets the ball into Alfie Lloyd. Good hold up play from the striker. He's having to go back there. Header on this left hand side. And Jose's had to come across as well. Murphy's in the middle and he's. Oh! That's a brilliant controlled effort from Murphy, that. So unlucky not to have that dip under the bar. The ball was bouncing and... Good ball out there from a Jose, wasn't there, it? Murphy. Well? It was a, a good ball in. I think that was by a Jose there. Can, can the young arse just look to play a ball in here? It was a lovely pass there by Murphy. Header on his left foot. And it was... Came off the head of a Jose there. I think... Uh, the Millwall defence didn't quite know what was going on there, but it worked quite favourably for them. From Smith. Abdomalik. The goal scorer from the penalty spot for the away side. Boateng. Boateng just trying to drive the ball into the box there. We'll win a corner. Yeah, Peter Blado just getting caught out of the pitch a little bit there. By Aurora having to come across and help out his left back. Just looks like he's landed. He's maybe landed a bit awkwardly there as he went went on his back there, pit bladder. He's looking to win it again. He does. Here's Murphy. 
Oh, it's a lovely bit of play there from QPR. Oh, just unlucky with the pass there, straight into the path of Penny. Allowing, this will allow. Game Mill getting very get stretched now, isn't Lee it? He. Right footed shot to the palms of Gilmore. Definitely the busy the keeper Hall wax this half, hasn't he? A lot of saves to do. Hall wax, sorry, yes, not not Jordan Gilmore. <laughs> A lot of them straight at him, but nonetheless, they have to be saved. Yeah, there's a lot of positives all around the pitch. Over Millwall's, Millwall's prowess in front of goals started to show his draws into Hearn. Hearn flicking it into Leahy. Leahy with the right hand shot and it's blocked. Great block in there by Pitt Blado, wasn't it? Just cannot get out, can they, the R's, I think? They're having a lot, having a lot of luck with the second ball, which yeah. I think. Not a lot of luck getting this away. A lot of unlucky ricochets for them today. And that's full time. A rather a disappointing result. I wouldn't necessarily say a disappointing performance from the R's. It was a, a very positive display, even from going two, two, two goals down. You know, two, two goals to one down, shall we say. Um, your thoughts on that performance, Connell? Yeah, you can tell Mill were an excellent team. There's a reason why they're second in the league. And and so good away from home. I thought the R's had a brilliant first half. Deserved leaders, but that second, uh, that first Millwall goal just took them to the end of the game, really, with that momentum. So, a 2 1 defeat. What are your initial thoughts on, thoughts on the game today? Um, I thought we, you know, the boys played really well in terms of uh, in possession. I think um, it was entertaining football. It's just that we entertained Millwall a little bit too much with our defending. So, uh, you know, we gave them a couple of chances and they took the chances. So, uh, you know, there was, like I said, there was some, each player had his strength and, and had something to do in terms of outcomes in the game. I think they got their outcomes, but it was just a, a negative result. So uh, not happy with the result, but happy with some of the work that was been done. I feel like um, the way the game went, we played well and we created a lot of chances that we could have put away. And I feel like we were a bit complacent for around the 10, 15 minute period. And then that's when they got the two goals. You know, there was a clear identity about what we were doing. Everybody was comfortable with the ball. Uh, the players were getting in between the lines and getting turned and attacking. And uh, it was just mostly the boys were really positive in, in possession. I think uh, we just need to clear up on, on how we defend and how we lose the ball and, and being clinical in the final third, because I think that's what was the difference between the two teams. I think it's really disappointing, obviously, especially when you're winning, playing some good football in the first half, but obviously second half came out sloppy. Gave her a penalty, they scored, the momentum's with them. And yeah, I feel like we just kind of let the game slip, if I'm being honest. Like we weren't, we literally went away from what we normally do, side playing long, sloppy in possession, and yeah, we got punished. We, we want the players to be problem solvers as well. So yes, they did really, really well in that area. And um, like we say, we just wanted the boys to be a little bit more clinical, because that's what the hardest part of the game is, to put the ball in the back of the net. And so uh, we need to work on that and keep working on that. And um, they're young and they're inexperienced, but you know, this is a great experience for them. When we play the games, especially at this level, it's all about development and we want to just, it's preparing us for that next step to the, the championship. So I'm looking, looking ahead to Bristol. Obviously we'd like to win. We want to go there to win, but also we want to go there winning in the right way. It's, it's about what it teaches, it, what it teaches. Playing in a stadium game where lots of people are watching, you've got to, you know, you get one chance you, you, you do something good, the fans clap. You do something, the fans groan. All these things now are getting them closer to, you know, this is the under 21s. There is no more under 22s. You know, this is, you either go up into the first team or you go out the door. So 2-1 loss today for QPR. So Joe, what do you think, what are your thoughts on the game? Well, I think after going ahead 1-0 at the stroke of half time, it's always quite a boost for a team. So I think on that, in that, sense they're going to be quite disappointed with the result uh, you know they conceded two sloppy goals I think for you know periods of that game they dominated but as Paul said in his interview a game's 90 minutes if you're not switched on for the full 90 minutes and not clinical enough it's very rare that you win games but I definitely think they'll take stuff from it I don't think it's the end of the world that they lost this game so yeah, yeah I think they'll well, just as Paul mentioned uh, the players have individual targets how important is it for players to know their targets and potentially meet their targets I think targets at this at this level is very important for young players. I think results come second to the individual targets, especially for a team like QPR where developing players is so important. You want players to you know have targets that mimic the first team maybe, 
so that there's a pathway for them to go in there. Um, so yeah, I think having targets is vitally important. I think, uh, as Paul said, a lot of his players achieved those today. So on the grand scheme of things, where they lost the game, I think there's a lot of positives to take away from it. Yeah, so like you said, there's a lot of learning from it. So what do you think are the important things that we'll have learned from today? Well, for learn from today, uh, well, I think any time you play in a stadium, it's a, it's a new experience for players. I know they, they play about four a year, but I mean, I think it'd be a lie if you said that it didn't affect the way you play if you're playing in a stadium. Um, so I think, as Paul said, the next step up from playing in a stadium is playing in a full stadium. So it's all about, you know, uh, gradual changes to, to players' development. Uh, and I think they would have learned a lot from, you know, playing in a stadium with cameras here. And... A 2-1 loss for QPR today. However, there was good individual performances and personal targets met. You never know, we could have seen the next Ilias chair.